And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, <coughs> the good brothers of, and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple. Coming, coming to us, coming back to us with another round of crazy ass Morai, di Morai dice. Because we, because What's the up? world needs more six sided chaos. The one and only the man, the man better known as Gear Grind. How you doing today, man? Or tonight What's in your good? case? Good. Yeah, it's it's night over here. I'm pretty good. I'm I'm wearing my snuggie. I got my uh, I got a beer here, mm -hmm. and it's even though it's got no alcohol. I don't know if that's allowed in the temple, like alcohol free beer, but uh -huh. like. I don't care. I don't care what people are drinking as long as they're drinking. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I'll, 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 I mean, if somebody if somebody's drink if somebody's drinking some of the more overrated beers, I'll certainly pick I'll certainly pick on them because I'm biased towards lo towards lo towards local stuff, especially given where I am. Oh yeah, tell me tell me about like uh, what's the local beer where you're from? Um, the short answer is a lot. <laughs> a lot There's, of beer. There's a, Where are you from, dude? Um, I'm in I'm in Minnesota in the st in the states. Um, okay. And there's a lot of there's a lot of local brews around. Um, and there's and cer at certain times of the year, it's not it's not hard to find a pub crawl or a zombie pub crawl for those who are into that. What's a zombie pub crawl, dude? Are you just like shambling around dressed as zombies from pub to pub? Yes. Oh my god, I knew okay. Like I kind of I kind of guessed what it was, but I was I'm still surprised that it is what I guessed. Yeah, you see you see them off and on off and on during Halloween. Um that's pretty cool. I would totally be into that. Um Summit and Surly you know, and and their whole collect their whole collection of varieties. Tends to tends to be tends to be some of the bigger one of the bigger names. I um another one another one that I another one that I like that's a cream ale is Castle Danger. Um, I the only what's a cream ale, dude? Um, it's an ale that goes down a bit smoother. Um, cream ale, man. Yeah, dude, I would love to try that stuff, man. Holy, um, it looks good. Um, Surly has one has one variant called has one beer variant called Furious, which um is a at your own risk kind of thing because it is um it is far more on the bitter sc end of the scale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, dude. Like you, you Americans have overtaken Germans in in beer making like <laughs> ten years ago or something. Um, There's like. A collective turning of heads here in Europe when, like, there were, like, championships and you just, like, wiped the floor with a bunch of the traditionalist, more boring German beers. And I know a lot of people that are, like, would, like, a lot of my German friends would, like, slap me right now because they're, like, ah, oh, all this hipster shit, you're always drinking this hoppy craft shit, just drink normal beer. But, like, you guys, like, made it cool to experiment around with beer again yeah. and it's great dude it's uh, awesome i find i find that whenever whenever you're not whenever whenever you're not allowed to experiment in a field that does that um that does that doesn't that's not a healthy thing to have <laughs> no dude uh, for real yeah yeah i mean okay okay we got to <laughs> you got to you got to like brain surgery or something well, we gotta like the, lay down some ground rules for experimentation, <laughs> you know? Just like fucking. <laughs> yeah, I'm, most, I'm mostly referring to I'm mostly referring to creative works. I've I've joked yeah. about in the past that I don't that um a good a good way to to kill off to kill off any momentum a project could have is infl is putting in some sort of design by gospel. Mm-hmm. Oh. This this idea of there are, of there are certain things that you have to do because you have to do them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if that sounds circular, what? that's because it is. Um, <laughs> but it, but when you can, when 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 um when 
when people start when people started getting exposed to alternative methods to cre to create instead of instead of a method that was born from one specific type of environment, um, you're gonna ha you're gonna have a bunch of different varieties as it as it is. Um, it's just a, it's just a matter of where it cr where it cropped up. Um, mm -hmm. Like I'm not gonna the, the the environment which created the thing, right? No. Yeah, ginger beer is a th is a thing. It is a thing. Um, further s further south, um, mm. we can't have that. Like you can't sell that in Germany and call it beer because there's ginger in it. I guess, right? There's yeah. it's called ginger beer. So I thought, yeah. like we have the. I don't know if you're familiar with the with the German um, doctor beer doctrine. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not. But I get but I get the feeling I wouldn't be a fan of it. <laughs> the purity order, which is like one of the the. I think the two most German English words in that um, in that <laughs> configuration. I'll send you a, a Wikipedia link. It's it basically like an ancient. Uh, okay, ancient. I don't know what what just uh, what, what constitutes ancient, but like an old um, rule about what can be in beer. And spoiler alert: it's not a lot of things, <laughs> so. If you're trying to trying to fuck around with beer, Germany might say like, nah. There's there's like, I think it's hops, water. Where's the where's the list? Ingredients permitted. Um. Okay, water, barley, and hops, and yeast is not mentioned, but. It has to have been used, so I think they just say "fuck it." You can use yeast. Mm -hmm. and it's like there's like weird shit, like people bioengineering yeast to taste more citrusy, and so you got like beers yeah. to taste citrusy that can still be called beer and not like beer mixed stuff, which I like. It's kind of like dystopian in a good way. I don't know, like. Uh, well. <laughs> Some something to keep something to keep in mind is that a lot of a lot of the a lot of the early generations of of, of Americans in the Midwest um, came from were um, Eastern European immigrants, mm -hmm. and because and that me that that of course that of course is going to, is going to include a whole lot of Germans, which is prob which is probably why you have a you. You have a whole lot of you have a whole lot of cheese in the mid in the Midwest and a whole lot of bread. In fact, the Midwest is called um, the the bread basket. Um, bread basket, but nice. e even with that, when it comes to who's the top consumer of cheese, that's still Germany. Oh, really? Like in the world, the per capita largest consumer of cheese is Germany. Damn, I didn't know, dude. Uh, dude, it's it's been years since I've been proud of this fucking country, my man. <laughs> And um, oh, dude, cheese is the best, yo! Like, cheese is the best, man. I um, <laughs> I had jo and I had jo I had jokingly said I, that I don't think it's a coincidence that so many power metal bands come from Germany when Germany <laughs> consumes so much cheese. <laughs> ah, yes, my dude, yes, yes, cheese. Oh. I saw you listen to. Oh, I hit you up after the last interview because yeah, I, I saw you were listening to, listening to Avantasia. Yeah. And what's the what's the guy's name, dude? So, Tobias something. Tobias Summit. Yeah, yeah, dude. He's the like the front guy from Ed Guy. Mm -hmm. And I saw that band's name, and you listening to it, I was like, holy shit! It was such a blast from the past, man. Me as a teenager going to Ed Guy power metal shows. Yeah, dude. One of the big one of the big things that's on my bucket list is to is to go to Vaca in at least one year. I've never been, man. I don't know if it's like worth it to if if you're like have you you could probably have a pretty good experience going to any German festival if you're like into the um Camping out, listening to metal music, like drinking beer, like shitty cheap German beer out of, out of uh, un unbranded cans and like screaming in the night. That's like any, probably any any festival in Germany can give you. I'm pretty sure that Wacken is um is like a little 
I don't know how you call it, like inflated or something. I don't know if it's like worth the hype that it, um, yeah, I don't know, man, but I've never been there. So like, maybe it is, man. Maybe it's gotta, it's gotta be rocking, you know, maybe it's, it's like Mecca or something for metalheads. Maybe you gotta go there, man. That's 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 always been the that's always been the attitude that I've ha that I've had. Yeah, it's like a sacred place where they gather and like. I mean, yeah. I'm a I'm a big I'm a big fan of um of Jap of Japanese pro wrestling and one and one of the bucket lists for that is go is um go is going to Cor going to um Corican Hall. Corican um, Hall, what's that? Um. It's tip more often more often is more often is used it typically it's typically used for sumo and other and other events but um it's the Japanese equivalent of say Madison Square Garden in terms of oh uh, there's got the a, there right. there been a bunch of fights there and stuff right mm -hmm. okay um, uh, has there been a pride event there probably um probably but pride is a pride is a bit of a sore spot given how, given how that turned out. <laughs> dude, pride never die, man. <laughs> did, did did you um oh dude, which what's the name of the event like Shockwave or something? Uh there's like they got like these um traditional Japanese um drummers with the huge fucking barrel drums and the yeah. string like the dude, we we like screenshotted that and put it as a back uh as a screen um <laughs> That's wallpaper. That's the wallpaper for my brother, and uh, his his girlfriend like filmed him his reaction when he <laughs> when he returned to <laughs> open his laptop. It was the best thing ever, man. Like the this the the shiny oiled up ass of the Japanese hunk banging that fucking drum at the beginning of Pride Shockwave. Mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the. B yeah, um, pride, pride is a pride is a in, is a interesting story in and of itself that ended up ending in an, un, in an unfortunate way. But yeah, now when I had you on last, you were you were kickstarting the first wave of of Morai Dice, um, and congr congratulations on managing to get that out of the door. Um, yeah, uh, thanks, dude. Um, so when. Um, when it came to, when it came to, when it came to the, the, um, finishing that up and do, and doing that one, how, um, what would you say were some of the, were some of the big learning experiences you had, um, doing what I think, I think was your first Kickstarter at the time or your first, your first Kickstarter? Uh, it, it was, it was my second, but it was the, the, the first one that, um, that was a serious logistical uh, undertaking, like sending out 430 something packages was like not a piece of cake. The last one was like, I think the physical editions of my of, of the game scene I did with a friend of mine. Um, we sold like 60 physical ones or something. It was like really. Uh, really really laid back um but like it, it didn't feel like that back then of course it felt like the, the worst thing ever because like i get i get uh i don't know if there's like new new shit i haven't done before it seems kind of hard mm -hmm. it's it gets like um it gets to a point where i'm like over overwhelmed and i'm like oh god no 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 i can't do it I'm gonna, I'm gonna ruin everything. No one's gonna get their dice. They're gonna burn me at the Kickstarter stake. I'm fucked. And then like, something comes along, like, oh, you gotta just fill out this form and send it to this guy, and he's gonna, gonna give you a stamp on this, and then like your dice are gonna come around, and, and everything works out, and like, ah, okay. And like, I gotta do some of those things, you know. And with every project, I, I manage to get out the door. Um, I hope to build on this repertoire of anti overwhelm, I guess. And like <laughs> it's a weird thing to say, but I, I think you get what I mean, like uh like uh, resistance to being overwhelmed and like having done stuff before that's like weird, like mm -hmm. 
European Union tax law and stuff and numbers and oh my god yeah like I just want to make dice man I just want to <laughs> have some dude that does that does all the boring shit but like this like one man operation oh it's not not like entirely I got like uh, very dear friends to help me out um, at times like packaging there's like a fun video I made for Instagram and yeah. the last update of us packing the dice up mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, le specific learnings. Specific learnings. Um, I guess tend tend to your community because without them you're nothing. Um, also, they've been like the best, dude. Like I've been fretting over. There was a specific thing. Yes, I realized I could never ever keep the promise of. Um, the delivery month of July, I think it was this year, um, and I really realized it early on, and it was, um, it was giving me like <laughs> some headache. Like, okay, I'm never gonna make this. How do I do it? Do I just like, do I just like act like I will, and then I don't, and I'm like, whoopsie, and like. But like it's gonna be done soon, or and, and what I what I then did was like like months and months in advance. I I went like <laughs> I ate some shit and I crawled to uh to the pantheon of my supporters and like begged um, for um uh yeah like I, I I just said like guys not gonna make this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the dice, but I don't know if I'm gonna like. They're not sure as fuck not gonna be with you in July, cause like things are. If I if I stick something in a box and send it overseas to America or Australia, it's gonna take up to three months to get there. If I'm lucky, I get all the like I get all the parcels out in July, but then they're gonna take like fuck loads of months sometimes. It was just mysterious. Like sometimes they're there in a week, and then some I think get stuck in a container and go on a ship and then like they're just I say they're just like sent via via ship. So and, and everybody was like super understanding and super nice and I was like so overjoyed that like I got messages from people saying like dude like it's super cool that you let us know and before like uh, clap emoji, clap emoji. I wish other creators were like, oh my god, this is awesome. So like, being being upfront with with the people that make um, uh, uh, that put food on your table and um, foster them as a community. Be nice to them. Have fun shit for them to discover. If you post a update, it should be like worth their time and like should be. In the spirit of the <clears throat> thing they they chose to uh, support, that's like mm -hmm. my main thing, I guess. Yeah. Now, with this one, you're d you're um you're doing th you're doing I believe three three more, and the first one is um weapons, which I'm sure I'm sure given some of the other ones will lead to will lead to some in lead to some interesting bits of chaos, which. Seems to be the um, battle cry of this of this whole project. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Um, although it did, although it didn't, it didn't escape. It didn't escape me that the sim that the symbol on the shield result looks a looks very similar to the elder sign. Oh yes, dude! You're the first one. You're the fir <laughs> you're officially the first one. You win. Um, you win a. What do you win, dude? I'm gonna think about what you win. Oh. Like, maybe like a cookie or something. Don't if you I end know. up sending me a cookie, don't send don't send chocolate chip or something like that because that w because that will be taken as an act of aggression. <laughs> I put raisins. I, I'll put raisins in there, man. I'm fine with raisins. Just what you would take? Okay, that's a hot take, but it's just like it's just like it's, it's just, not like, it's past. not by it's not by choice. I have an out. I am allergic. To oh, okay. Oh, okay. I'm so, oh, oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're um. Do you are you uh, uh lactose intolerant or no? It's the cocoa bean specifically that fucks with me. Damn. And Damn, that's rough, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. So I'm at. So no imagine, chocolate. Imagine the imagine the pain when the family decides to take a vacation in her in 
Hershey, Pennsylvania. You know, Chocolate City. In, in <laughs> Shit! The Hershey's Hershey's is because of because of a town called Hershey. Um, there's a there's a whole well there's a whole lot more there's a whole lot more to it than to it than that. But we'll go, okay. we'll go with that for the time being. The point, <laughs> okay, the that's point, just the point is imagine imagine the, the lore. torture of ha of having to be surrounded with a bunch with a bunch of chocolate you can't eat for seven days. <laughs> Fuck no no, dude that sucks like dude um, yeah. At least, at least, when one of my old coworkers sit, um, gave gave me a, gave me a chocolate cake on my on my birthday, I, I I was able to get my revenge. Um. Short version on that, he let he likes it. Um, I tricked him into eating unsweetened chocolate. I tricked him into, is he not like into like really bitter chocolatey stuff? Um. Well, he well um. I don't know. I don't know if he is or not, but there are certain expectations when you when you when you think when you think that you're biting into a Hershey bar and instead you're biting into into the kind of chocolate that's used in baking. You know, expectations are a thing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So he. A hundred percent chocolate is like a hundred percent cocoa chocolate is like super dry and like. Weird. I like it because I like bitter, bitter stuff. But like, if you're not into it, man. Yeah, and um, well, that well, that and, that and I met I messed with the I messed with the coffee, um, to the point to the point where there was a memo where I am banned from the I am banned from the coffee machine without supervision. Dude, every time I'm on here, I he hear new hijinks <laughs> from you, man. Just like last time, there's been a, <laughs> there's been some pranks too, which you told me about, like cow drop D4s on like a white kitchen floor or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I've done, I've done. Yeah, that. yeah. And now the cake thing, dude, kind um, of a menace to society over here. Um, <laughs> well, I don't. It's not like it's not like I do. It's not like I do these kind of things willy nilly. I only do. I only do them to people who provoke it. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like victim blaming to me, man. Well, if you if you, I have I have a sim. There's a simple set of rules. Don't me um, don't don't interrupt me when I'm record. Don't interrupt me when I'm recording. And and don't me and don't mess don't mess with my don't mess with my food and don't taunt me with chocolate. Oh, don't no taunting with chocolate. Can you have white chocolate? No. Oh God damn it, dude! I'm so sorry. Yeah, tough subject, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, um, while we were talking, I was like looking up a guy who gave me really great input on the new edition. He like hit me up after the first one. He got the first one. Mm -hmm. His name is his name is Raphael, Raphael or Raphael or Raphael. I'm I don't know, but like if you hear this, hit me up. You're gonna get some free dice, cause like he's uh he's uh he's uh. He deleted the message apparently. Like I rolled, I I found our DMs, you know, but like there's no longer the message he wrote. <laughs> Did I dream this? Did I dream of a guy writing do these kind of dice? And I was like, yup, all right. And then I made them, and then now the the message's no longer there, man. It's possible. I got it. It's possible. I'm not. I don't want to try and get in the guy's head, but it's possible that he spitballed a few ide a few ideas, not no not actually knowing if you'd even do it. Oh. It, you mean like he wanted to do them themselves himself or no no i no i think i think it was a i think it was a case of it could it could have been a case of just of just brainstorming ideas yeah yeah and whenever you, and i'm going to send them right now a dm hey i made your dice i made your your dice dude mm -hmm. but hard emoji you, all right let's see let's see dude yeah, but you, even with that, you ha there's a very in there's a very interesting um, co combination combination of we of weapon symbols you have for this. We have a bow and arrow, a sp a um a, sp a spike a spiked a spiked knuckle duster, um, mm -hmm. an axe looks like looks like a looks like a looks like a Danish axe. Um, yeah, it's a Viking, Viking inspired one. Yeah. Yeah. So some part, some part of Scandinavia, pick one. <laughs> I 
Um, <laughs> a sh a shuriken, a um, a heat a not a heater shield, but but not too far removed from a kite shield. Um, oh damn! You know your shields, bro. You're I'm out I'm out armed here, dude. You you got like <laughs> you got like the knowledge, man, on on shields, dude. I gotta Google this shit while you go on. Yeah, go uh, on. Sorry. And a, and a spear. Um, there's a small part of me that wants to contact one of my artists and see and see how the, and see how they'd interpret a fi a fighter archetype using all using all the weapons at once. <laughs> yes, dude. Oh my god, that would be great. Oh. Shit, we gotta like, we gotta like talk what what's like what what would be his rate on that because like that would make great promotional material, yeah. Yeah. Have him like fight all the monsters from the monster die and like. There's like a pile of the the loot the loot stuff in the background, dude. That would be awesome. Yeah. Um. Giving me ideas over here. The. Now speaking of that, when it comes to the creature die, um. I do I do like that there that with each of them there's a good amount of interpretation that could be done but um why do I get the feeling you're not a fan of spiders <laughs> <laughs> like um you mean cuz of my cutesy spider or yeah <laughs> I mean I think it's more flattering looking than an actual spider I don't know man I like well, or, or is it like anatomically incorrect or something? Is that like the gotcha journalism I, we're gonna go for now? Look, there. Look, I um, <laughs> I ended up, I ended up, bur I ended up burning up all, all of my, all my real, all my um interest in realism and in, in that, in that regard. Ever, ever, ever since I had the, ever since I had the falling out with the SCA, and, and some, and some of the, and some of the grogs over the years. Um. What the what? SCA Society for Creative Anachronism, um, basically the kind of people who who you'd see who you'd see a lot in re in Renaissance fairs and and the like. Oh yeah, okay yeah, um, reenactment type guys. Okay. Yeah, um, some of them some of them are a bit more anal about about it. My co my colleague um, Zan has a bit of a story where the uh, where the higher ups in in his particular chapter of it were. We're very anal about the fact that we're very anal about about two things. One, when he had when he had a spear for one for one thing, they expected him they expected him to just po to just poke and not and not use this not use the spear like a like a well somebody who actually know somebody who actually knows how to use a spear would use it. Um, what they're like? Is and, it like a sport thing? Where they're like, ah, oh, it's unfair or something, because that I would get if you're like, no, no, th no, yeah. they th no, they thought they they thought he was breaking the immersion by you by using the, by improvising with that th with that thing. And That's fucking dumb, dude. They also had this attitude of the of the only weaponry that you can use that you can use as a knight is sword and board. Sword and board. That's why I didn't put a fucking sword on uh, on the weapons die, man. Like I wanted a sword on there. But I thought like we got something similar on the loot thing and swords are like I, I read a lot of sword and sorcery um over the last couple of months. Um but and I love them, like I love magic swords, I love fucking swords and shit, but like they they are kinda overused, I think. Um like in my not in my not so humble opinion, um the the most co the most common slash reliable way to equip a character is usually um, long sword or in some games a bastard sword and a large shield. This is the most standard vanilla boring way to, equ yeah, way to equip a character because then that that's not to say you that's not to say you can't do it but at least yeah. at least have something to sp to sp to spice it up a bit. Um, yeah, they got there's got to be some flavor, man. I um maybe maybe it's because maybe it's because of some of the of some of the stuff that I, that I would read growing up, but I um I've always been I've always been a I've always been a fan of um of what I of what I call poke and board. But basically basically the spear and shield setup. That's that's uh that's uh, imbalance, bro. Like imagine being <laughs> being faced with like 
a bunch of guys with shields and pokies, man. You're fucked, dude. What are you gonna do? Well, <laughs> you can throw be... stuff at them or something, but like, you're not gonna hit them because they got shields. Oh, Pokemon what? board is OP, dude. <laughs> if you're like in a corridor or something. Yeah. Well, the, well, um, again, again, if one of the one of the unwritten rules of combat, if it's stupid but it works, it's not stupid. <coughs> I guess, yeah. Uh, but I've, I've yo always... yo. What about this? Shields with holes in them for pokey. Well, you could, like um... a huge tower shield with a hole in it. Is that a thing? Wait, um... I gotta Google this. I think that I think there might be there probably there probably were there probably were some variants of them. Um, I I'm all I'm always in, I'm always in favor I'm, I'm always in favor of looking around for for crazy ideas with weaponry. <clears throat> um, some of the, some of the especially especially given some of the varied inspirations and the fact that I don't um. I don't have a one size fits all attitude when it comes to how you do fantasy. In fact, I absolutely hate that. Oh. Like I've um I've used the term the Tolkien melting pot. Mm -hmm. Not not to not to not to slam the like the likes of the likes of Tolkien or the Lord of the Rings, but I'm more ref I'm more referring to this um to this vi to this Vaguely Western European and more more specifically vaguely British Isles approach to fantasy that so many people think is the default. Mm -hmm. And I do remember someone saying was that that's that that's mainly that that attitude is is mainly an American thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I heard I, that too. Yeah, I seriously I um I don't based on everything that I've seen I don't think that's the case. I think it's I think it's a whole lot of stuff that got grandfathered in without actually questioning it. Mm. Um, so I'm reading uh, the first Witcher book right now, and it's like it's such a breath breath of fresh fresh air. I re like I remember I remember reading a Medium article by um, Daniel Vavra, the cr the creator of um, Kingdom Come Deliverance, mm -hmm. and one of the things he one of the things he talked about is. I'm not is his particular belief that what ha that what helped spur, was helped spur the Witcher on in popularity was the was the fact that it was it was it was a it was ostensibly a eastern a eastern european fantasy mm -hmm. using a lot of mythos from the from the yeah. countries in eastern <clears throat> europe um, and aggressively so right there's like a bunch of fucking Stuff and, crawling around in the woods yeah, that is just like directly from those legends of yore. And I, 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 I googled a bunch of creatures that that pop up in the book, and it's like super fun to see them pop up everywhere in m mythology. Yeah. Yeah. In in the same in the in the same vein. I growing up, I was a big fan of um John of John Sanford's um Prey series of books, which Prey, was, which which was, yeah um. Usually, blank prey was the was the naming convention. He was, he was he was a um he was a mis he was a mystery author that I would that I would read mm -hmm. a lot as a kid. Um, oh, it's phantom prey, silken prey, invisible prey, gathering prey. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's written, but for the longest for the longest time, those stories focused on a detective named Lucas Davenport. Um, were centered in the tw were centered in the Twin Cities where I grew up. And mm -hmm. there's a whole there's a whole lot of landmarks in the in the like, um, from from that area, and even even outside the Twin Cities, just in Minnesota as a whole, um, and it's it's always it's always amusing when I look when I look at cer certain films, say in the in the nineties or the late eighties that were that were fi that were filmed in my own town. I'm like I know where that is. <laughs> um, I've been there. Mm -hmm. Um. That's a great moment to have. Yeah. Always, it really fucks with me when it happens in video games, cause like, <clears throat> cause like, um, in video games you walk around mm, locations, right? Mm. And if you walked around there for real, it's super strange. Yeah, like I, the... can, I can certainly see that. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. have that happen as much because nobody wants to set, vi nobody wants to set very many video games in Minnesota. <laughs> but like it's like tourist landmarks, right? I've I've been to 
<clears throat> to a place in in Washington D.C. like the the huge. Uh, You're thinking the of huge... the Washington Monument. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh. Um, not I... like the 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 thing with uh, is it fucking Lincoln chilling yeah. in there? Not 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 that one, but like the uh, before it. There's like. Uh, while before that, there's like an obelisk somewhere. Yeah, that's the Washington Monument. Oh, yeah, all right, okay. And there's like a... I remember distinctly playing some of the... Uh, one of the newer um, Splinter Cell games, and you come out of a carnival or like a, a fair ground, and you walk on this place, and I looked around and I was like, I, I've been here before, what the fuck? Oh my god, I've been here before in real life! Yeah. It's such a weird feeling, man. Um, in that same in that same vein, um, are you familiar Are you familiar with the Metro series? Yep. Um, a few years ago, there was there was an there was an attempt to do to do a to do a film version of that, but because oh god, of one, because of one change because of one change that the filmmakers wanted to do, the author, the author killed the project dead. Um, <laughs> what was the change? They want they wanted to move it from Moscow to Washington D.C. and he was like, no. Damn. Dude, to just say no to a bunch of million dollars because of like integrity and stuff, that's like, dude, kudos. Fuck. I don't know, I don't know. I would probably be like I, I think Stephen the Stephen King approach would be mine. I would just say like, yep, I don't know if that's yep, something give me to money. To. I don't know if that's yep, something give to me money to give and then I'm going to shit on it later relentlessly. <laughs> um, <laughs> give me your fucking Hollywood money and then I will shit on your stinky shitty fucking movie. Even if it's a good one, I was still going to fucking shit on it cuz you made my book into a movie and it's never going to live up to my expectations anyway. I um I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to do that. I have too. I have too strong of a sense of integrity. Um, oh, okay. Because it, it's for me. <laughs> for me, it's a, for me. It's a case of of te of telling of telling people telling people that a given restaurant is shit when I go there every week. Um, <laughs> it's. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to ever come off like a Janus. Um, but when it came, but when it came to Metro, so so much of that is so root is so rooted in both Moscow and the mm -hmm. and the massive um, Metro network in Moscow. Mm -hmm. that trying to take that up, try, that it's so that it's tied to its identity and mm -hmm. um, not only location, but like culture and like people and like the the whole feeling of like being Artyom and. Um, Having the factions that like existed in like post-war Russia, like and you had got like the Nazis and you got the commies and like all that stuff, like it would just not make sense to port it, bring it to America. It's just like such a yeah, it's just a localized piece of uh, localized piece of art. I think like yeah, I I have I have a bit of, I have a bit of respect for the fact that when Remedy was making Max Payne, um. They they, they hi, love they, that shit. Dude. Um, they hired they hired a photographer and hired some bodyguards to take up to take a bunch of photos and up, we're talking hundreds of photos in New York City. Oh, cool! I didn't know that. Was that the first Max Payne or? Yeah. That it, dude, I didn't know. That's awesome. That and having friends and family um, um play 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 a whole lot of the characters because they couldn't actually afford actors. Which is how, which is how you get um, Sam Lake playing Ma playing Max. It um, wasn't that like some some developer or like the the head of the studio or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I heard. But like when now when it come, when I come getting back to the creature die, um, like I think I the way I what I see out of this is what we we have um, an assassin. The skull of an, the skull of a necromancer, a ghost, a spider, a sl a slime, and a kobold. <laughs> a kobold? Yeah, I thought goblin, but like 
<clears throat> as well as the creature, uh, as the as el as well as the weapons die, those should be like a little. You should have like a little wiggle room to <clears throat> to like make the shuriken like a throwing knife or make the <laughs> make the goblin an orc or a kobold or whatever. Yeah. Well, I think that I think some. I think it would be I think it would be accurate of me to say that you, that the reason that the, the reason that they're that they look the way that they do is you're, is making it so that that there's a whole lot of room for interpretation. Yeah, and also some like maybe a little inspiration with the elder sign or the upside down cross or something, but like uh, yeah, it should be like the ghosts could be like. Like a poltergeist or like a, um, uh, um, an object that has a soul trapped in it, and it's like acting like the dungeon is alive, kind of like it. The ghost can like jump around between um, objects and animate them or something. Yeah, you should be able to like. I didn't want to like want it to say ghost or something, you know? Like I didn't want it to be literal. Yeah. Yeah, and of course with the. Tr with the um, treasure die, um, because because uh, obviously obviously have obviously having having some lo having some loot involved is get is go is going to be going to be par going to be paramount. Um, we have we have what we have what looks like a what looks like a ritual dagger, a diamond, nice, yeah. a cup. Make sure you choose wisely. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> A potion, a scroll, and a um, a ring. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, it's not the one ring. <laughs> no, but it's like um, I think it's uh, it's Elvin uh, writing on there, and it says, "Did you know what it's? Do you know what it says?" Um, what on on the one ring? I know. I yeah. Know what, I know what it says. I just no, not on the one ring. On the on the Moirai ring, um, the ring of the Moirai man. No, that doesn't, I that doesn't look like that. Doesn't look like Elvish. It look. It looks more like dwarven. Oh, it could be dwarven. I don't know. I just. <laughs> oh no! You called me, dude. I don't know what it is. Like I. I gotta. I gotta check it out if it's like. Elven ruins or something, but it's supposed to say my right eyes on there. I gotta check the. I, I received the final designs from the manufacturer a couple of days ago, and they look awesome. I don't know if they retained the original carvings, but I doubt you could read them on the on the final dice anyway. Yeah. Well, if I get a big enough magnifying glass, I probably could. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. If they if they could still be like. Um, Really readable on there. Yeah, but even but even even so, the 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 um the die them the die themselves are meant are meant to are meant to are meant to provide an idea. I look at I look at a lot of the Morai die as um an extremely elaborate Rorschach test. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, that's that's a cool way to put it, man. Oh. Because I'd I'd seen something similar with a with another um another 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 gen, another random generation project that coincidentally also came out came out of came out of part of Germany that being the Fatum deck. Ooh, that sounds awesome. Um, it's basically how do you basically, how do you um spell that? Um, F A T U M. Um, it is basically Back. a character creation yeah. deck that is. Loosely inspired by tarot. Mhm. Mm oh, I'm seeing it now. It looks absolutely gorgeous, man. Holy balls, dude! How much did they? Oof! All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah. The th the thing with the th and I used I used it I used it a while back for for a podcast. The thing the thing with the thing with all of them is that it you'll have it you'll have a a title and and an, and a picture. Um, with some with some category when it comes to the t type of, type of card and the rest the player just has to figure out, um, which mm -hmm. is why I compare these kind of things to Mad Libs or um, or a Rorschach test. Cause, Damn, they got boosters and everything now. Uh, there's no there's no boo 
there's no booster. There's there was the original one that was all fantasy based, and they're doing their um. They had recently. Oh, gothic it. punk expansion, steampunk expansion. Okay, yeah, it's not like random, but they they have the nice booster packs to rip open, which is like um, awesome. It's more it's more of expansions than booster packs. You're not dealing. Yeah, with yeah, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing that. Yeah, surprise no. mechanics or that kind of bullshit. <laughs> what what kind of mechanics? Surprise mechanics. I have to use that because I'm legally required to take the piss out of Electronic Arts at least once a week. Surprise mechanics, bro? Shit, that's like gambling for children. Like a euphemism. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the, well, when they, well, when they got, when they got dragged in, when, when the whole loot box thing came, started, started, ga started gaining um, heat, they got, dra they got yeah. dragged in front of that hearing, and that was, that was how the representative tried to, def tried to defend it, and nobody bought it. Um, <laughs> surprise mechanics everybody looking at them so gambling yeah no you, surprise you mechanics bro it's completely different they tr they tried to compare it to a fucking kinder egg <laughs> yeah like okay um and of, and of, co and of course i'm not sh i'm not sure about it about any other con about any other countries on the matter but um the belgians clearly didn't see it that way given yeah given that they based Given that they told, they told, they told Electronic Arts, 2K, and a few and a few others, get that shit out of the out of the games, or you can't sell them in Belgium. Nice. Dude. And oh, they made dice. The Fatum guys make made made some really nice custom dice, man. Oh, um, relation relationship dice. Yeah. Um. But these. But even 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 with even with that. Um. I suppose I suppose one good one good way to combine combine old combine old with new is combining the combining the um the yes no die with the weapon so you so you can have so you can have the talking weapon gimmick. Ooh, dude, I'm gonna so steal that shit. Yeah, I'm I'm opening Notepad right now, dude. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. I never thought of that. Like the um all of the um. Many of the the um, synergetic effects of the dice I mentioned on the on the story page, mm -hmm. they came from friends of mine. Like I showed a bunch of dice designs to them, and um, they were like, "Oh, you could like roll them together, and like it makes like." And I'm like, "Fuck yeah, you could totally do that." And then like it started like bubbling in my head. That's awesome, dude. You could have like. Um, Oracle, Oracle items. You know, you could have like an Oracle ring or something. Yeah. You could, um, you could certainly have that. Um, of course. Um, I'd, I'd. Talking I'm not sure. I'm not weapon. sure how someone would combine the tr the um, treasure die and hit location, but that would be interesting. Oh, uh, I thought of that actually. Like it transforms. I I thought about like um, magical items that fuse that like either replace a body part or like fuse to a body part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it could get really weird really quick. And yeah. Yeah. Or. Or the. Um... Now of course now the re the reaction the reaction die that's that's an easy one to that's an easy one to figure out how you, how you could combine that with any but. Has anyone um has anyone tr has anyone tried to combine th combine three die into one? Because a lot of a lot of the examples I saw were um, two die combinations. Oh, um, the easiest one. Oh, you mean the three new dies into one, or? No, I mean, I mean just three just three die between these two waves. Oh, three die. Okay, so it, it gets difficult if you like. You could always go like you you roll the monster and then what it's wielding or something, but that's kind of cheating, right? That's that wouldn't be like a challenge. So I don't know, dude. Oh. You could go with like weather. Uh, give the give a weapon. Give give um a weapon like um like an elemental effect with the weather and the weapons die, and then like um roll up a loot thing that um, then kind of produces or conjures or shows the way to the weapon or something. Mm. 
Hmm. You could make like a quest out of the dice. I just I just noticed, man. You could like use them to conceive of quests. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, and hmm. when but when it comes to the when it comes to the when it comes to the di when it comes to the die combinations, you um like you could you could you could just as you could just as easily ha have mix um mix the monster and tr and um and tre and treasure di and treasure die to say that it's a bot to say that it's a um, magic item that's a body part of Vecna. Of what? Of Vecna. Vecna. V e k v e n a v e c n a. Oh yeah. All right. Oh, is that like a Forgotten Realms character? Um, he's been not. He's not. Nece he's been. He's been a. He's been a character that's a. That's that. That originally appeared in Greyhawk. Um, Greyhawk, dude. We're going way back now. Yeah. He's um, he's a he. Well, he can, He first showed. He first showed up in in Eldritch Wizardry back in seventy six. Damn. Um, and. One, but because of the fact that he's a lich, well, if you if you cut, if you cut him if you cut him to pieces, it's not going to kill him. And there's a bunch of artifacts that ha that are his different body parts, and the head oh. of Vecna appe appeared in the Planescape Torment video game. That's an epic idea, dude! Like you could roll the the hit location dice and like figure out if it's like if you're wielding Vecna's stick or something. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if I'd go that far. If I go that far. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. Okay, Gear Grind Incorporated does not endorse the the wielding of um, uh, wizards of coast of the coast um, property dicks. Just at don't. Le at least not. Do at least that. not in official capacity. Unofficially, when <laughs> anything that happens yeah. at the table stays at the table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yes. Vecna, great fucking character, dude. I didn't know that. That's great. Like, yeah. But uh, I gotta come here more often, man. Do I have to like? Uh, do I have to like make a dice edition for every time I come on here? Or... <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure if I'd go. Th I'm not sure if I'd go that far. But like when it, but even 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 with that, when it comes to. When it, comes, when it comes to say combining weapon and mo weapon and monster, the the obvious the obvious approach would be, um, would be a what would be, the monster wielding that particular weapon. But what if you flip that around and ha and have it that the we that the weapon was of that monster's type of design or d or designed specifically? To yes, that I thought monster. about this. Yeah, like a ghost, uh, like a ghost axe or something. It's like incorporeal until you hit something with it or something. Yeah, I thought about that actually. Yeah, like a goblin, like a goblin spear or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that shit, but like I I thought about it briefly. I I, I faintly remember that. Yeah, I gotta and, write all that shit down, dude. And. <laughs> One of one of my favorite um, D D twenty hacks of a sort <clears throat> is Fantasy Craft, and in that in that game, um, even base weapons are cu are customizable because they want ev they wanted everything to be customizable, and one of the one of the fa one of the factors in custom in customization is just the racial make of the thing because a sword made a sword made by say a dwarf is gonna look very very different than a sword made by an elf or made by, or made by an orc. Um, mm -hmm. And they and um in that in that same vein a a a sword that a sword that's meant to a, a um let's go with an axe in this case since that's not that's on it is pro, <laughs> is that was that was made to deal with um undead is pro, is probably going to have a different appearance than one that was made to deal one that was made to deal with spiders. If it was made to deal with spiders. The act, the axe is probably going to be, I don't know, on fire when spiders are around. You know. Ooh yeah yeah. If that sounds like I'm ripping off the blo the glowing effect that Sting had in the orc, uh, yeah, it's... the orc sword, yeah. Well, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. Yeah yeah, just steal everything, man. I'm just stealing all over, man. 
Well, it's awesome. Yeah. I think I think my mentor once said that if you um if you rip off one guy, it's plagiarism. If you rip off a dozen guys, it's research. Mm hmm. Yeah, there was another quote like great artists. Fuck, it was like good artists steal great artists. Fuck, I can't, I can't. But like, it's the same notion about like mm -hmm. getting inspiration everywhere, and it's especially cool with with stuff like um, role playing because like leaning on on tropes at the table is like great shorthand because like you create an image instantly in everyone's mind. Um, if you're not too heavy-handed with it becomes cheesier yeah i've been I've, I've certainly been that guy who's been like hey that's from there and there and like fuck yeah it's literally like the same thing and you called me out on it and i was banking on that you not knowing that shit but okay um yeah but like it's it's like uh it's like no harm done you can like rip off like the the most propri proprietary characters and concepts and shit and it's like yeah doesn't matter it's like it's just so gaming is so innocent and like mold moldable that way where it's like because it's so private in the most cases that it's like untouched by all the 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 um proprietary stuff we surround ourselves with like uh not being able to say to say the word beholder somewhere or something, you know. It's like, mm. Oh, I'll I'll say it. I don't ha I don't have I don't have that I don't have that proclivity. Um, I mean, yeah, you can totally say it, but like, if you put a beholder somewhere on your product, <laughs> like, well, can well, you call it the eye tyrant or something? I don't know if that's also like proprietary. Well. You know? I do. Rem I do remember when so when somebody at Wizards tried to bu tried to bully that one that um, one guy who was making one stop stat blocks, but that's a whole other story. Um, they lost that fight, yeah. by the way. Nice. Um, but now I I now at at the time you're about you're about I'd say about some um, nine tenths of the nine tenths of the eight or nine tenths of the way there. It's 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 hard it's hard to tell since I have to, since I have to deal with um with with conversion but you're let you're less than se you're less than 700 euro um away from the goal at the time of this at the time of this recording um oh, yeah, all dude. things go as planned which just to make sure um what would you be shooting for as far as a release window for the for this second wave of dice oh um oh yeah dude um like I I put oh, let me just double check this again. I did the same thing last last year. Oh, dude. I just just gave myself like a real Wait, where did it say July just now? <laughs> I put July, I put July in the in the highest tier, man. God damn, dude. Okay, yeah. Um <laughs> apparently the Beyond the Veil tier is going to go out in July. Uh, for July, I hope I will make this. Um, the other ones I put at October because I wanted to give myself more wiggle room this time around because I fucked up last year. Uh, this year, still. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I, um, production's gonna start in like February, probably. And then three months from there, mm -hmm. the dice are gonna be with me. February. One, two, three, May, and then like, I'll probably like maybe if I put it down beyond the veil for July, I'll prioritize those, and I should get them out by June at least, and then I hope they're gonna they're gonna be there in July. But like, like I'm gonna I'm gonna send them out June, July, August. Um, all of them, I hope, and, uh, everything else is kind of, like, up to the chaos gods, man, like, dude, shipping's been crazy these last couple of years, man, everything's going on a ship, because there's no planes going and stuff, maybe it's getting better, but, like, it doesn't look like it's getting better anytime soon with, like, 
Uh, depend. There's a whole lot. It's hard for me to say that because there's a whole lot of moving parts involved with that. Mm -hmm. but, but it is. I'd say. It, I'd say there. I'd say there's some slow improvement going going about. Um, <laughs> but I'll I'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how to seeing how the die how the die develop. But with all that said, I would like to sincerely thank you for coming for deciding to come back to the temple. I know I kind of sh showed up out of no showed up out of nowhere. <laughs> no, it's always nice to hear from you, man. Like I I'll be happy to be on anytime you want me. If you got like a got like an empty spot somewhere or something, we can talk gaming or hang out. Yeah. yeah. Um and, and of course, any anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often awesome. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, yep. a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>